Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about how to check if two fractions are equivalent. We already checked in the previous videos that you can draw an area model to see they're equivalent, but that's not always the best method, especially if the numbers get really large. Another thing that we saw is that we can see if, they were, if the numerator and denominator were multiplied or divided by the same number. Here, right, we can see that 2 times 1 will give us 2, and 2 times 2 will give us 4. So that's why I know they're equivalent because they share the same scale factor. They're multiplying by the same number. You can also go backwards using division. So in this case, we can go backwards and we see that 2 divided by 2 will give us 1 and 4 divided by 2 will give us 2. So that's how I know they are equivalent. If we look at the other picture as well, we have 2 thirds equivalent to 6 over 9. Here's 2 thirds. Here's 6 over 9. You can see they have the same area. But I can multiply 2 times 3 and it will give me 6 and 3 times 3 will give me 9. So that's how I know they're equivalent. And also I can divide and go from this direction from the right to the left. Now the next method that we're going to use is called cross multiplication. Now cross multiplication is used with proportions. Multiplication used with proportions. It has a lot of other uses. We'll see other videos where you can use this technique. But for this case, it's just going to be useful. It is very useful when you have a fraction equals a fraction. In this case, we have a proportion here, right? Proportion means fraction equals a fraction or two equivalent fractions. You can only use this technique if you have equivalent fractions or, again, a fraction equal to another fraction. And I'll bring that up later on as well. Now, the way cross multiplication works is you actually draw a cross and you multiply right that's like the name of it so it's kind of easy to remember it has cross and multiplication see what it looks like again this is just a technique to check if they are equivalent what they're asking you to do is to see if they're equivalent so you still have to answer the question are they equivalent yes or no this is just a technique to check if they're equivalent um, many times I see students where they um, just you know they start doing cross multiplication and they they don't answer the question. So that's why I bring that up. Anyways, so we circle one four and draw an arrow like that, and we circle two and two and draw an arrow like this. I noticed that we circled a two in the numerator here, the denominator down here, numerator here, denominator down here. The things that you circle are the things that you're going to multiply. So in this case, I'm going to multiply two times two. On the left side, I'm going to multiply 1 times 4. I'm going to bring down that equal sign. Now I'll solve this. So 1 times 4 is 4 equals 2 times 2 is 4. So now you read it, 4 equals 4. That is a true statement. So that's how I know that they are equivalent. That's how I know that 1 half and 2 fourths are equivalent. Let's try another one with these two fractions up here. Again, we're using cross multiplication. Good technique, technique that will be used later on when you solve when you're solving equations sometimes they, that's when we have like a variable as one of the numbers so instead of all instead of them giving you all the numbers they'll give you a variable on top or on the denominator so we circle two things create a cross and when we create a cross we multiply so two times nine but right? i circle the two and the nine so i'm multiplying those two i bring down my equal sign i multiply three and six now I multiply 2 and 9, so that's going to give me 18. Bring down the equal sign. 3 times 6 is 18. That is, again, a true statement. 18 equals 18. That is true. So that, that means that 2 thirds is equivalent to 6 over 9. Remember, this doesn't really mean much as far as the question. The question is already equivalent. And now, based on this information, we can say that they are equivalent. Try another example, a little bit larger number so you can see how it works with larger numbers as well. Let's say I have three sevenths. Is it equivalent to 15 35ths? Well, again, you don't want to draw this out because it's too large, so you can use cross multiplication. You create a cross. And you multiply. So on this side, 7 times 15. Bring down the equal sign. 
on the other side, 3 times 35. 3 times 35. Multiply those numbers, so this will be 105 equals 105. So this statement says 105 equals 105. That is true. So yes, 3 sevenths equals 15 35ths, or they are equivalent, they are proportional, or they are equal. Again, three things you can say. They are equivalent, they are equal, or they are proportional, or they are a proportion. One final example. You're going to see one where it actually fails. One half is that equivalent to three fifths. Now you could draw an area model, and some of you might say, well, that's one half, that's more than half, so they're not equivalent. But it will use cross multiplication. Right? So go those two, draw an arrow. So go these two, draw an arrow. Multiply the things that you circled, multiply the numbers. So one and five together, and multiply two and three together. One times five, that's five, equals, and that's six. One equals six. Again, that's not true, right? I'm saying one is equal to six. That is false. So please make sure you pay attention to that because that will be very useful in other um, classes that you take, the idea of reading a false statement. So I'm reading it out loud and it says five equals six. That is false. So what does that mean? That means that, that means one half is not equivalent to three-fifths. Remember, this just gives us information about these two fractions. Once we got our information, then we can say our final statement, and that being that they are not equivalent. All right, so hope that helps. Again, this is called cross-multiplication. Please practice it. Um, do these problems again without, you know, without watching the video, and then check to see if you got the same result. Now, it's a very useful technique that you will see over and over again in your future classes, so I would advise that you uh, try your best to uh, master it. Anyways, hope that helped. I'll see you next time.